Hello everyone, my name is Fox. This is my follow-up review on the Vitra One XR glasses. This is a follow-up review to my preview of the pre-production models for the Vitra Ones. Finally, they have the production models ready and they sent me out a pair of these to review, so thank you very much to Vitra One team for that. They also sent me out some accessories. This is the mobile dock mount. This is the part that will attach to a switch, so we'll take a look at that on a switch and a switch OLED, and this part will actually go to the mount itself. If we want to take a quick look at what the mobile dock looks like, this is basically it. So there's a battery inside as well as some magic that's going on here. So this is the business end of the mobile dock. When you plug the switch or the Steam Deck into here, this will power the switch or the Steam Deck, but also use the USB-C capability for the display port part, and then convert that to video either to HDMI out here or you can do two XR glasses, which is really cool. Like if you wanted to connect one switch or one Steam Deck to two XR glasses, effectively having two screens, sharing the same screen, you can do that with the Vitra One mobile dock, which is actually super cool. All right, we're gonna take a look at the glasses first. This is the matte indigo color version of the XR glasses. So we're gonna go ahead and take this out and we're gonna kind of reopen this up again. I just put this over here on the other ones as well. And then these kind of just, open up and present them like this and then from here you have the carrying case that goes with your Vitra One XR glasses as well. Inside are some additional nose pads. These are some customizations that to fit your face better as well as the anti-clip hair cover. This is something that I put on just because I actually just like how it looks um, but it also kind of just helps me feel for where the power cord goes to where the magnetic uh, USB-C part goes on to and that part's actually really cool. So we'll take these out for right now and move this box on the side. When opening it up, you have the cable in the back here. And this is the caddy area where you would actually be putting the USB-C magnetic cable itself. So we'll go ahead and undo this just so you can see what it's like. And it's really just like paper holding this together. So I am not very precious with this. So just so you can see, this is where the magnetic clip for the USB-C portion is. And this is a huge improvement over the pre-production model. How easily it just snaps on. And when you're just having these glasses on, you don't actually need to take them off your head to apply these. And the amount of magnetic force that's on here, it's, I don't know, this is just such an improvement over the pre-production models. Alrighty, so just so you can see that. This is how it looks with that rubber guard on. And the only real reason that I like having this on, not that I actually need it for any particular reason, but sometimes I forget which ear it's on, so I just feel for the rubber to be able to place this on. And even when this cover is on, it doesn't get in the way of this magnetic clip thing. And you really don't have to be precious with it at all. It just kind of snaps right on. So this is probably one of the best things that I've seen since going from pre-production to production. This is a, a, a big upgrade. So depending on what color of the glasses that you get, either the indigo matte, it'll change the color of the case corresponding to it. So this is the black, and then you have the black case to it. Overall, with the case involved as well, I am so much more a fan of the indigo matte version. The black version, I generally wouldn't consider. I mean, I realize that's this is just an opinion, and opinions, you can like the black one just fine. But the indigo matte version, just in my opinion, is infinitely better with the overall design of the Vitra One. And I say that because when we talk about these chrome, these very polished chrome accents that are on here, this one covers up a bit. But if we take a look at this chrome accent right here and these chrome accents here, they complement the matte indigo color as opposed to this very glossy black plastic. Uh, the plastic here also feels and looks uh, they just look like, and I hate to use the word, they just look like cheap plastic. Whereas the Indigo Matte, same design, just looks way, way better. So for me, it's not even just the color choice, but the matte type of material really makes the entire design much, much better. So for me, the Indigo Matte is the clear winner in terms of design, just complement. So obviously, again, that's just an opinion, but just wanted to kind of mention that between the different types of color variations and what you're gonna get. For the Vitra ones themselves, the other thing I wanna mention here is the Vitra One team also sent me out my own prescription glasses. So I sent them my prescription and then I got this in the mail and this just goes on via magnets as well. So everything about this, whether it is the magnetic attachment for the USB-C here, or if it's just the magnet for these prescription glasses, it just, 
overall it's just i'm a big fan of how they have everything snapping together now the other thing and again the feature team doesn't even recommend it but i put on the bigger nose guards here and the reason i put the bigger nose guards on here is because i can actually use my glasses with these longer nose guards and have my prescription regular glasses without these on naturally and still use the Vitra One glasses. Now, Vitra Team does not recommend that. They actually recommend doing this. And it is a far slicker application of using it, especially if you're going to be using it while laying down. But again, my particular favorite model is definitely the Indigo Matte version. In this particular part of the video, we're going to be taking a look at the accessories for the Vitra One, which is the Vitra One mobile dock, as well as the mobile dock mounts. So this is where the mobile dock will go into the mount itself, and then this mount will... In this particular instance, with these two dots right here, you can see this is for the Steam Deck. We're going to go ahead and line this up. And what they've done here is these two screw holes are basically what kind of lines everything together. So if I just put it on here, you can see that it's not lined up correctly. But because if I just slide it over, it locks into place with those two divot holes. And then we can then take the mobile dock and place this in here and start going. Now, the one thing that I want to say here, and I've done a bit of testing on this for about an hour or so, is that... Even though there are these plus symbols that will kind of separate the unit about a few millimeters, if we take a look in here, the only air that's going to be coming in for the inlet of the Steam Deck is going to be uh, starved for air a bit. The end result is that even though I thought it would be far worse than it actually was, the actual result when doing like 15 watt the max tdp gameplay on the steam deck was around a two degrees celsius increase in temperatures so not as much as i thought it would be but it still does suffocate the unit a little bit so that's something to be mindful of if you're looking at to get the mobile dock i still don't think it's anywhere in terms of being dangerous for the steam deck itself we're looking around like 82 83 degrees celsius which is fine for the unit itself but it's something that I wanted to kind of tell you guys about. And if you're not comfortable running your deck at those temperatures, where realistically it's going to be at 80 degrees Celsius, uh, getting up to that point on high-end gaming anyway, it's up to you if that actually matters. Now let's go see how this actually looks on the Switch itself. So here we have the original Switch, and we'll go ahead and connect this up. So now what I like to do, here we have the USB-C on the bottom, is we're going to go ahead and line this up on the top first. And I only like to do it this way first because this volume button I found actually gets in the way a bit. So once we go ahead and line that up, it pretty much just kind of clips in no problem. What's nice about the mobile dock for the Switch accessory is that it already orients itself in the position that it needs to be so that the cable is really close by. Now you can kind of tell that with how the switch is done and where the mobile dock creation is done is that these USB-C ports really line up a bunch, whereas on the Steam Deck it does have a go across. So this mobile dock really was designed from a switch perspective at first, but works just fine on the Steam Deck. Now the other thing to point out here is that the Steam Deck is actually far more comfortable to use this while it's already attached because of the handles on the Steam Deck and how much wider the Steam Deck is, it's easier to use. So if you're going to use something like this, I would really recommend that you know you actually just go ahead and disconnect the Joy-Cons. So the one thing that I really wish that they added to the mobile dock by itself was a kickstand. So I really feel like there should be a kickstand because this dock will actually kind of overlap where the the kickstand is so even on the swoled you're not going to be able to use the kickstand at all with this particular thing on so this particular unit i really wish that it had a kickstand because i would have also benefited the steam deck as well so that's just something that i wish that they did and likewise for the swoled we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing so we'll go ahead and mount this on here like this and once you get that lined up you're going to want to come on down and that's how it looks on the switch oled the swole led or the original switch but again because of the position of this i really do prefer how this feels in hand and in use on the steam deck as opposed to the switch you're basically going to use this if you're going to be sitting this down and using it all right so here we have the mobile dock solution on the steam deck itself right now and right now we are actually just powering the device off the mobile dock itself but as soon as we connect anything here this display will shut off and we're going to go ahead and show you what connecting both of the glasses to the mobile dock looks like right now. And right there you can see the steam overlay right there running on both of the glasses. It's actually really cool to see. So if you had any desire to want to share one particular unit with two particular glasses, you can do that with the mobile dock accessory. 
I think this is a bit luxurious because buying two of these along with the mobile dock would be really expensive. But if you were the type of person that was looking to, if you were going to be traveling and you wanted to share one device that you can play two players with these particular glasses. So that's this look on the mobile dock accessory. It does work. It's hard for me to film both of these running in any particular capable manner, but it does work. All right. So the follow up review to my preview of the XR1 glasses. Number one, I much prefer the indigo matte color by far. The design of this is what I would choose miles ahead of the black version. And that's just a you know, personal opinion, but this is something that the black version I still don't like. I didn't like the pre-production model, how it looked, and I don't like how the production model looks either. However, these indigo matte ones, these are ones that I really, really like design-wise. They it goes it complements the entire design of it rather well. The improvements over the pre-production model are pretty apparent. Number one is this magnetic connect connector. This thing right here is fantastic. I mean, it competes with what Apple has done with their MagSafe stuff. In terms of how easy it is to put on, there is no kind of question of if it connected or if it wasn't connected, you don't have to take it off your face to apply it. It's secure as all get out. Like even pulling it off, it has a lot of tension. Uh, it's just fantastic. This over the pre-production model is miles ahead better than it was on the pre-production model. The sound on the particular XR glasses. Now this is something that I kind of want to impress on, on people because when it's it's hard for me to capture the audio for you guys at home watching this to get an understanding of what's going on here. Number one is don't anticipate or expect that these to be loud in any respect. They aren't loud. They aren't going to overwhelm you. They will be clear. It will be audible, but you may want it to be louder, at least insofar as I want it to be louder. However, on the flip side of the coin, if you were to think about using these glasses as privacy glasses, I had someone two feet away from me and didn't know that I was actually watching or listening any to anything. So in terms of sound pollution, these things have a very, very directed audio stream and are really great for privacy reasons. So if you were thinking about not just having these at home, but also taking these while traveling along and not wanting to bother anyone around you, these are really good. The speakers on these are fantastic. From that viewpoint, in terms of minimizing sound pollution to an extreme degree while still being uh, good for the person that's wearing them, they are they are very good. The other thing that I like about this is obviously the prescription glasses here and how they magnetize on. It's just another part of the whole process that just kind of complements and makes the entire product itself well thought out. Now, the thing here that I kind of have to be kind of a little bit negative on is that on the pre-production models that I had, I had noted that there was some fringing on the edges. Now, there is not as much fringing on the edges as there were on the pre-production model. However, I still get some fringing on the top right. Now, if we look right here, you can see you can make diopter adjustments on the device itself. Now, this is really important for people that actually require this. Now, the Nreal Airs do not have this feature. So, the one thing that are nice about the Vitra ones are if you're the type of person whose eyes and face require diopter adjustments, this is going to be a set of glasses that will accommodate you. However, because I'm trying to tune these in, the best case scenario that I have when tuning in these diopters is that I still have some fringing on essentially the top right of my screen. Now, that's not terrible. It's not a not awful because most of everything that I'm looking dead on in the center is crystal clear and in focus and I can read and everything's legible. But I do want to kind of make it make a mention of this that depending on your eyes and how you're going to be setting up the diopter adjustments, even with my prescription glasses, I do have some fringing on the top right side. Overall, they're still excellent pair of uh, XR glasses, and if you require diopter adjustments, this is going to be one set that is easily recommendable. The only thing that I want to say here, and it's it's not that it's a bad thing. A lot of times these XR glasses try to advertise that it is like a 100-inch screen that is 10 feet away from you. And while that is true, it is also true to say it's like a 25-inch screen 2 feet away from you. So if you were to imagine a 1080p 25-inch monitor that you sit at your desk, these are going to give you a good idea of what to expect. So that is my wrap-up review on the Vitra One XR glasses. If you look in the link below, there is a 10% off coupon uh, provided there. Also, this is like one of the first affiliate links that I've ever done on my channel ever. So there will be some money that comes to me as well as a disclaimer. That is it from me, guys. As always, thank you for your time. And thanks for watching.